When we think of wartime survival, the mind jumps to rifles, rations and raw endurance. But you know, one of the most underrated battlefield technologies wasn't a weapon at all. It was a piece of fabric. During World War II and long before that, soldiers faced the brutal reality of exposure. Cold, rain and heat could kill faster than a bullet. Supply lines often failed. Tents were just too heavy to carry, and many troops found themselves stranded without cover. Yet, from the mud of Flanders to the deserts of North Africa, they had a secret, the waxed cloth method. With little more than a blanket, wax and fire, soldiers turned ordinary fabric into waterproof, windproof, instant shelter tough enough to survive campaigns, and honestly flexible enough to save lives. If you're a history enthusiast, camper or survivalist, this forgotten method is worth mastering. It's part of a long lineage of fieldcraft that soldiers, explorers and pioneers relied on when nature gave them no mercy. And best of all, it still works today right in your backyard. The battlefield conditions that demanded a simple but durable shelter solution. During World War II, soldiers on both sides faced endless days in the open. Canvas tents were heavy, hard to pack, and required poles or vehicles to set up. Infantrymen, often operating on foot or behind enemy lines, just couldn't afford that luxury. They needed a material that could protect them from wind and water, but remain lightweight and compact. Waxed cloth became the answer. The concept wasn't new. It dated back to the 18th century, when sailors coated their sails in linseed oil and beeswax to make them repel water. By the 1940s, the military refined the process into something any soldier could do in the field. All they needed was a section of canvas or cotton, a block of wax, often scavenged from candles or supply kits and a source of heat. Within an hour, they could turn a flimsy piece of fabric into a durable shelter skin that could shed rain, resist mildew, and even block wind. This wasn't just about comfort, it was survival. Hypothermia was as deadly as enemy fire. Soldiers who slept in soaked clothes or under damp ground sheets often, you know, succumbed to exposure before morning. The waxed cloth method gave them a fighting chance. So, how did the waxed cloth method actually work in the field? Well, the process was deceptively simple, but honestly, brilliantly effective. A soldier would spread a piece of fabric flat, anything from a poncho to an old uniform sheet. Then, using a candle or solid wax, they'd rub it thoroughly across the entire surface. The friction would start the wax melting slightly, allowing it to cling to the fibres. After that, the cloth was held near a heat source, sometimes a campfire, sometimes a lantern, and, in emergencies, even the side of a hot engine block. The heat melted the wax deeper into the fibres, sealing every pore of the fabric. When it cooled, the result was a flexible, waterproof material that resisted tearing and absorbed far less dirt and water than untreated cloth. Soldiers could fold it and pack it easily, yet when spread over a frame it deflected rain as effectively as issued tents. The edges were sometimes reinforced with additional wax and soot to prevent fraying and to camouflage the sheen. In North Africa, soldiers often combined waxed cloths to create lean-tos, or ground sheets that kept sand and moisture at bay. 
In Europe's wet forests, troops used them as overhead tarps or as emergency sleeping covers. It became a universal trick, practical, field-tested, and entirely soldier-made. Ah, waxing works because it changes the surface tension of fabric fibers. You see, cotton and canvas naturally absorb water due to those microscopic gaps between their fibers. But when you apply wax, it fills those gaps and coats each strand in a hydrophobic or water-repelling layer. So, when rain or dew hits the surface, it simply beads up and rolls away instead of soaking in. Today, outdoor gear companies use the same principle, only with synthetic coatings. However, the traditional wax cloth made by hand has one major advantage. It's infinitely renewable. When the waterproofing wears off, you just reapply wax and heat again. Quite handy, isn't it? If you fancy recreating this method in your backyard, or for survival purposes, the process is nearly identical to what soldiers did decades ago. Start with a piece of tightly woven cotton, canvas or linen. Make sure it's clean and dry. Then take a block of beeswax or paraffin wax and rub it firmly over one side of the fabric until it has a thin, visible coating. You can use the side of a candle or a block from a hardware store. Easy as that, really. All right. Next, you'll want to use a hairdryer, a heat gun, or even the radiant heat from a campfire to melt the wax right into the fibres. Just move the heat source slowly and evenly, making sure the wax actually liquefies and soaks through the weave. Let it cool completely before folding or using it. The finished cloth will feel a bit stiff, but smooth with a nice matte finish. In practice, you can use this for multiple purposes. Stretch it between two trees to make an instant tarp, wrap it around your gear to keep it dry, or lay it under your sleeping bag as a moisture barrier. Some outdoor enthusiasts even craft wax cloth ponchos and backpacks, the same way soldiers did, which is quite fascinating, really. A single square yard of waxed fabric can truly transform how you handle the elements. It becomes your tent, your blanket, your ground sheet, and your raincoat all at once. The waxed cloth method wasn't born from luxury. It came from hardship. It was the soldier's answer to a problem no one else could solve for him. When you study these wartime improvisations, you see how much human adaptability depends on understanding materials, not just technology. Waxed cloth is a perfect example, a low-tech solution that stood the test of time because it's grounded in practicality. Every modern survivalist camper or prepper can learn from that mindset. You don't need the newest gear or expensive tents. Sometimes the most effective solutions come from knowledge that's older than your grandfather's rifle. And you know, when you make your own wax cloth, you're not just creating a shelter, you're preserving a piece of forgotten military history. If you found this deep dive into soldier ingenuity useful, don't let it stop here. Go ahead and try the waxed cloth method yourself, see how it performs in the rain, and, well, share your results in the comments. And if you want more field-tested, historically rooted survival knowledge, hit that subscribe button and share this video with someone who respects the craft of old world resilience. 
Here on Backyard Wisdom, we keep history alive, one forgotten skill at a time.